words of power because we are kings and our words matter. Machines is awesome God. He is a great God. Amen. When good things are happening to you, you must never forget uh, that it's not because you're such an awesome person. It's because God is so awesome. He is so gracious. He is so good. It is his power, his might, his strength, and his spirit that caused you to do those things. Strength will rise. For a person who has a lot of revelation concerning the cross and the suffering of Jesus and Jesus and what he has done and who he is and all that. For a person who's got a biblical revelation of these things, those movies are interesting to watch but they are not as astonishing and mind-blowing as it is to some people. Why? Because you have seen what they could never see. You have seen what a movie cannot portray. No Hollywood director can portray. How would you portray something like this? He became sin so that we may be made righteous. How would you portray that? How could you portray Christ becoming sin? First of all, the director will have difficulty understanding it. <laughs> Unless he's got the Holy Ghost in him, he cannot understand. He's got to understand it by divine revelation. But I understand it. I understand it and I rejoice in my understanding of that. He became sin. I've preached on it so much. He became sin. The embodiment of sin. For our sake. How would you portray that he took our curse? As it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. He took our curse. Galatians 3.13 says. How would you portray 
Jesus taking our curse and hanging there as a cursed one. How would you portray a cursed one? Very difficult. How would you explain that to a Hollywood director that Jesus took our curse? That guy will say to you, I don't even believe in a curse, first of all. Most probably, you know. How would you portray that? It's very difficult. These things cannot be portrayed. How would you portray the fact that he took our sickness and carried our pain? That the chastisement of our peace was laid upon him? How would you portray these things? Very difficult to portray. In the Old Testament, remember on the Day of Atonement, they had to have two lambs to portray the work of one person, Jesus Christ. One lamb was not enough. Why? Because one lamb, they took one lamb and laid hands on that lamb and confessed the sin of the people. The priest confessed the sins. And then they killed the lamb and then they burnt the lamb as a burnt offering. As the fire went up and the animal was burnt down to ashes, people stood there, had their hands on their chest and watched and said, my God, I should have burned like that. It's my punishment. The fire is the indication of God's wrath upon my sin. That lamb, when the priest confessed the sin of the nation over it, it took all our sin. It became our substitute. It became my substitute. Therefore, it was killed. It is punished by God. The wrath of God, instead of falling on me, has fallen on my substitute. That's what it meant. But that was not enough to portray what Christ has done. So a second lamb was necessary. This lamb also was taken and again the priest laid hands on it and confessed all the sins of all the people of the nation of Israel. And then a man was assigned to take this lamb far away to a point of no return into the wilderness. So he would walk the lamb as the people stood there and saw the lamb go far away from their sight. And soon they lost that lamb. It's gone far away. And the man has led it into the wilderness to a point of no return. He is supposed to lead it to a place where it will not find its way back again. It will probably go around in the wilderness in the hot sun, get scorched and die there. Never come back. This is the lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. It was not, not enough to portray that Jesus took our sin and was punished for our sin and the wrath of God fell upon him. It was important to portray that our sin will never be brought back. It will be removed as far as east is from the west. God will never remember it anymore. It will never come before our eyes. God will never bring it before us. It's gone never to come back. How would you portray it? You can't kill a lamb and then walk a lamb to the wilderness. You need two lambs. But one person, Jesus, did it all. It's very difficult to portray what Jesus did. That is why the word of God is the best at providing the picture. This is better than a Hollywood movie. Amen. The revelation that, the, that comes by the Holy Spirit is far better than what any movie can do in portraying Christ. All right. So hope is about seeing in that way, seeing mentally. Seeing by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Seeing through the help and aid of the word of God. Seeing with the Holy Spirit showing you what has been prepared for you and what has been done for you and made ready for you. Now, let me just turn to 1 Kings chapter 19 for just a moment. There we read about Elijah the prophet. This is a good illustration of uh, how you must not see the wrong things. You must not use your mind to see the wrong kind of thing and picture the wrong kind of things. Remember Elijah brought fire down from heaven when the people of Israel backslid and started worshipping Baal. He brought fire down from heaven. He challenged the Baal prophets to bring fire down from heaven. They couldn't bring fire down. Then he took some sacrifices, put it on the altar and poured water all on it and around the trenches so that nobody will say it got fire by accident, you know. Totally wetted it and then called down fire and the fire came and consumed all the sacrifice. Big miracle. And after that he took a weapon and killed 400 and some prophets of Baal. A mighty prophet. You want to be a prophet? 
kill 450 men. <laughs> and after he did all that, Queen Jezebel, the wife of the King Ahab, who's behind, who was the one that really ran the country, she was a very mean woman. She sent a note saying this. Listen to verse 20, uh, verse 2, 19, 2. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. She says, in 24 hours, if I don't kill you, just like you killed those Baal prophets, may gods do to me exactly what was done to these men that died. May I die, she says. In 24 hours, I'm going to kill you, she says. She sends a note. Now, see, you must remember who this guy is. Let me tell you, let me give you a brief thing. Before all of this happened, he raised a widow's son from the death. Until that time, no one has ever raised a widow, I mean, no one has ever raised a dead man for, uh, back to life. Never. It has never happened. Not on biblical record. And he raised a dead man to life. Secondly, he went to the king and told the king, listen, it's not going to rain until I say so. From today, no rain. Telling a king and disappears out of sight for years. And the king is searching for him. Get that guy. You know, no rain. Since he said no rain, he's going to speak again to get the rain. You know, Challenge the king. No rain until I speak again. And then he calls one day Baal prophets and challenges them and brings fire down from heaven. And they couldn't do it. And after fire came from heaven, kills all the Baal prophets and all the entire army of the nation is standing around. Not one soldier touched him. Single-handedly he kills all the prophets, Baal prophets. And then he goes and intercedes for the rain. And the rain comes. It has not rained in more than three years. Now rain comes because this man says so. Rain is coming. Now, when the rain came, he told the king to go in his chariot. He let the chariot take off ahead of time. And then he outran the chariot. Just imagine what kind of prophet this guy is, you know. He must have been something else, you know. I, I don't think it's humanly possible. You know, this guy must have been tremendously anointed of God to do these things. Something came over him, you know. He just ran past the chariots, a chariot of the king. I don't know how many horses pulled that chariot. He just ran past it. This guy, having done all of this, receiving a small note from this Jezebel, as soon as he received the note saying, if I don't kill you within 24 hours, may God do to me what you did to the Baal prophets. When he received the note, he began to see his head fallen over there, cut off. <laughs> began to see blood flowing out of his body and killed and, uh, and put to shame. He began to see it. That's what that the problem was. He began to be afraid, taken over by fear. His hope was gone. He gave up hope. Listen to this. Very interesting. Verse 3. And when he saw that. See when he saw that. Not just the note. But he actually saw. His death and all that she was going to do. He saw that. He arose and ran for his life. And went to Beersheba. Where he belongs. Uh, which belongs to Judah. And left his servant there. Just gave the servant retirement. He decided his life is over. He won't need a secretary anymore. <laughs> no staff anymore. He said, go off, you know, no more. I'm closing office, finished. This woman is going to kill me. I'm running for my life. And then, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he prayed that he might die and said, it is enough. Now, Lord, take my life for I am no better than my father's. Now, this is what you call Christian suicide. <laughs> He didn't want to kill himself. So he's making a prayer. Lord, kill me. Take me home. A lot of people are praying for Christian suicide. In many homes you'll hear this. Lord, I don't want to live one more day. Take me, Lord. I'm ready. Today I'm going, you know. For some reason or other. They had a fight with the husband or wife or, you know, whatever it is, you know. Don't want to live anymore. 
he sits there and cries over it what happened to him why why how did he get from such a powerful level <laughs> to fearing one woman who was a queen don't you think god was honored him all this time with so much power and might and victory would honor him in this situation against that woman that's an ungodly woman who's trying to kill him god will certainly do that but the problem is this guy's perspective has changed see when good things happen to you when too many good things happen to you sometimes when everything is going too well sometimes people begin to think look at me i'm awesome i'm not, am i not you know i'm just something wonderful i'm the one making it all happen i am the key person in this whole thing without me nothing can happen you know that's the kind of thing that enters into a person when everything is going too well it's like some people you know had a simple very humble beginning and sometimes uh, you know and then they reach very high positions and uh, and status in society you know have you heard them talking you know it's like one guy that flew in an airplane and he was so enamored by the whole thing by the status and by all these things uh, that has come to him and he was flying and he said to the friend sitting next to him he said you know this is awesome i'm just awesome he said look at me i'm flying 600 miles an hour 40000 feet in the above in the air just imagine what kind of status i have now how powerful i am am i not awesome the other fellow said it seems no you're not flying the plane is flying <laughs> you just bought a ticket for a few thousand rupees and you sat on it therefore you're flying you are not flying at all my friend come down you know get your balance you are not flying the plane is flying the guy kept on talking no 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 i'm just an awesome awesome person look at me you know he said well if you don't want to believe it just step out <laughs> at 40000 feet high you know <laughs> then we'll find out find out how awesome you are <laughs> that's what was happening to elijah <laughs> elijah was gone out of his mind he thought he was better than everybody because he says that in his prayer if you read verse 4 he says lord take my life for i am no better than my fathers that means he's been thinking all this time that he is better and superior than his fathers in spirituality and everything whereas it is not so he's just another man and god has been gracious to him god has called him god has appointed him god has anointed him and god has sent him and god is with him that is why these things are happening so when you're flying in an airplane you got to thank god for the wisdom that god gave somebody to invent this thing so that it's flying and taking you places to go you are not flying my friend you are not that awesome the god who gave the wisdom to build these machines is awesome god he is a great god Amen. when good things are happening to you you must never forget that it's not because you're such an awesome person it's because god is so awesome he is so gracious he is so good it is his power his might his strength and his spirit that caused you to do those things he got off took his eyes off of that now when you take your eyes off of god and his word and all of that when you look at yourself as a great achiever then these kinds of things begin to take place fear comes because now you're looking at yourself and looking at this queen the comparison is between you and the queen he would have had no problem in the days when we when he was living a different kind of life he would have looked at himself in god as an anointed one and then looked at the queen and he would have said that queen cannot do anything to me he could have unseated her from her place of power and thrown her out if he wanted he had that kind of power working in him but instead of that he put his eyes on himself and upon his situations rather than on god and the power and the anointing that comes from him and the word of god that uh, gives him such power amen keep your eyes on god and his word acts chapter 27 acts 27 paul is being taken to rome as a prisoner 
on the way there is a shipwreck and now verse 20 now when neither sun nor star appeared for many days and no small tempest beat on us all hope that we would be saved was finally given up again we come back to hope all hope is given up no hope elijah lost all hope by looking at other situations if he kept his eyes on god he would have kept his hope and he would have kept the victory all hope is gone he says but after long abstinence from food then paul stood in the midst of them and said men you should have listened to me and not have sailed from crete and incurred this disaster and loss and now i urge you to take heart for there will be no loss of life among you but only of the ship but for there stood by me this night an angel of the god to whom i belong and whom i serve saying do not be afraid paul you must be brought before caesar and indeed god has granted you all those who sail with you therefore take heart men for i believe god that it will be just as it was told me right in the middle of that storm and the shipwreck and all that was happening people were in fear quite a lot of people in that ship in that primitive ship great fear came upon them fearing that they will lose life paul stands and assures them that they will not lose life only a shipwreck but not a loss of life on what basis he brings hope in that hopeless situation it seemed like all hope was lost but how d- does paul restore hope he goes back to the word of god if you remember already god told him before he went to jerusalem and got arrested god told him that i will take you and i will take you to places you will have to you will have to stand before caesar and testify for me god has already told him and now in the midst of the storm god reminds him and says don't worry you're making the trip i am going to take you there on government expense you're going to stand before the roman emperor and testify for me don't worry about this you're going to reach there you will arrive there if you're going to arrive there the ship is going to arrive there if you're going to arrive there all these guys with you they're going to arrive there safe also that is why he stood and assured them look how hope comes all hope was lost but then 14 days they have not eaten and paul stands there and literally takes the bread and blesses it and puts it in his mouth and eats it and encourages the people saying we're not dying we're going to reach there we are going to arrive we're going to get to the place uh, where we're going because i've got an appointment there god has something for me i've got a destiny to fulfill see that's what hope is all about hope is finding out what your destiny is in god and fixing and setting your mind on that and never taking your eyes off of that no matter what storm comes your way what difficulties you face no matter what kind of a shipwreck there is god is going to get you there in spite of all the obstacles that you'll have to face because god is good and god is all able amen, amen? that's how you travel through this life never lose hope never stand in a place where you say i've lost all hope no when nobody has hope you must have hope because you are a christian you know god you have a purpose you have a calling you have a god who's a living god and there is hope